Hello, my friends and fellow Titanic fans. Um, in honor of Titanic's 111th anniversary, um, I'd like to show you guys a very special book. This is the Memorial Edition, Sinking of Titanic. And this is from 1912. This is the first edition. Um, I'd like to share it with you. And uh, I hope you enjoy the video. This is the memorial sinking of the Titanic, 1912 edition. This is the first copy, and I'd like to read to you the preface. The memorial edition, sinking of the Titanic, most appalling ocean horror. With graphic descriptions of hundreds swept to eternity beneath the waves. Panic-stricken multitude facing sure death and thrilling stories of this most overwhelming catastrophe. To which is added vivid accounts of heart-rendering scenes when hundreds were doomed to watery graves. Compiled from soul-stirring stories told by eyewitnesses of this terrible horror of the briny deep. By J. Henry Mowbray, Ph.D., LL.D., the well-known author. Profusely illustrated with a great many photographs of thrilling scenes in this faith, fearful catastrophe, to which is added accounts of other great disasters, the Minter, Carp the Minter Company, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Let me read you the preface. We are as near heaven by sea as by land, cried Sir Humphrey Gilbert. Our, his ship sank with him, and the hundreds who perished in the ocean within reach of the exultant welcome of the festal preparation offshore have found paradise as surely, and in giving the last full measure of devotion, have gone as brave men would wish to go. Sorrow that is too deep and strong for words clutches the heartstrings of humanity, and the nation mourns for the heroic dead who were carried down into the sea with the crushed Titanic. They face death with high hearts, making the supreme sacrifice so that the women and the helpless little ones might survive. It is a heart-rendering story redeemed and ennobled by the heroism of the victims. Its details are appalling, the world is full of mournings for the dead. Nature has conquered again, destroying with ruthfulness the hand most marvelous ship that ever floated on the bosom of the deep. It is the worst disaster that ever befell any vessel. It is the wrecking of a whole armada within one hull of steel, vaunted and unsinkable. The sinking of the Titanic is an appalling catastrophe in the contemplation of which any words that can be uttered are as futile as the presence of any majest majesty of the angel of death. The maiden trip of the newest, staunchest, and greatest of the modern ocean greyhounds has thus apparently ended in the most appalling maritime disaster ever recorded. The first advices brought word first safe removal of all the passengers and the possible success of the crew in their endeavor to bring the noblest ship afloat to shallow water. Another triumph of the wireless telegraph was hailed. From both shores went up a pagan of thanksgiving and overwhelming loss was not of life but of things material that however valuable are far less dear and one day can be replaced. But now is a bolt from the blue and the forecast of the final mortal terrors of the Day of Judgment comes the message that 2,300 souls aboard, but 700 chiefly women and children have been saved. All earthly concerns besides this calamity seem to fade into littleness and nothingness. The sole redeeming circumstance is, the hero, is that heroes met their death like men, 
and that human love was victorious over human terror. The mightier than death and the open grave of the remorseless deep. The one availing, excuse me, the one alleviating circumstance is a terrible tragedy in the fact that the men stood aside and insisted that the women and children should first have places in the boats. They were men who were accustomed merely to pronounce a wish to have it granted. For one of the humblest fishing smacks or a dory they could have given the price was to be paid to build the immense ship that has become the most imposing mausoleum that ever housed the bones of men since the pyramids rose from the desert sands. But these men stood aside. One can see them and gave place not merely to the delicate and the refined, but to the scared women from the steerage with her toddler by her side coming through the very gate of death and out of the mouth of hell to the imagined Eden of America. To many of those who went in harder to go on and stay there with the vessel gaping with its mortal wounds and ready to go down, it meant that tossing on the waters they must wait in suspense hour after hour, even after the lights of the ship were engulfed in appalling darkness hoping against hope for the miracle of the rescue dearer to them than their own lives. It was the tradition of Anglo-Saxon heroism that was fulfilled in the frozen seas during the black hours of the night. The heroism of that, the women who wept and went as well as the men who remained. The sympathy of all the world will go out to the stricken survivors and the victims of the worldwide calamity. That's the preface. In memoriam of the steamship Titanic's dead, triple screw steamer Titanic was the largest and finest vessel in the world. She was 882 feet 6 inches long and weighed 45,000 registered tons. She was 92 and a half feet wide. The lifeboats of the Titanic, which would only hold one third of the passengers, all could have been saved had there been a sufficient number of boats. These few boats rescued all that were saved from this appalling disaster. Steamship Titanic showing the length as compared to the highest buildings. One is the Bunker Hill Memorial in Boston, which is 221 feet high. Two is the public buildings in Philadelphia, which is 534 feet high. Three is the Washington Monument in Washington, which is 555 feet. Number four is the Metropolitan Tower in New York, which is 700 feet. Number five is the New, New Woolworth Building in New York at 750 feet. Six is White Star Line's triple steamer Titanic, 882 and a half feet tall or long. Seven is the Cologne Cathedral, Cologne, Germany, which is 516 feet high. Eight is the Grand Pyramid of Giza in Africa, 451 feet. And nine is St. Peter's Church in Rome, Italy, which is 408 and 48 feet high. Entrance Hall and Grand Staircase of the Titanic. A striking introduction to the wonders and beauty of the Titanic is the entrance hall and the grand staircase and the forward section where one begins to realize for the first time the magnificence of this surpassing steamer. It is the largest and finest steamship in the world. It is indeed a floating palace. Captain Rostron of the Carpathia, who rushed his ship to the rescue of the Titanic's passengers and brought them to New York, this book contains many thrilling stories that were told by passengers while aboard the rescue ship Carpathia. William T. Steed of London, England, 
editor review of reviews and who stood by Captain Smith when the ship was sinking and without trepidation went to a watery grave. A huge iceberg as photographed about 100 miles north of the scene of where the Titanic sank. Isidore Strauss, the New York millionaire merchant and philanthropist who lost his life on the giant Titanic. Seeking information about lost relatives and friends at the office of the steamship company. Effect of the mirage as seen among the ice flows. After collision with the iceberg, the Titanic soon began to sink and there were not enough lifeboats to hold half the passengers 1,600 souls were swept to eternity. These bright little French children were rescued from the Titanic. Miss Hayes herself, a survivor, is taking care of them. They were coming to America with their father who went down with the ship. Sinking of the Titanic, there were a mighty roar when the ship went down. The bow sank first with stern poised in the air and suddenly it plunged out of sight, carrying hundreds of souls to eternity. Captain Smith of the Titanic, who heroically did all he could to save women and children, and then like a true hero, he went down with his ship. Colonel John Jacob Astor, grandson of the founder of the Astor family in America. After putting his young bride in the lifeboat, he remained on the ship and died as a hero. Cunard Line Steamship Carpathia, which heard the wireless call of the distress, was the first to reach the scene of the disaster and take on board the survivors who were found in the lifeboats. Rescued passengers in one of Titanic's collapsible lifeboats waiting to be taken aboard by the Carpathia. Seen on the upper deck of the Titanic, showing lifeboats as they are carried by the steamships. All the passengers could have been saved if the ship had carried three times as many of these lifeboats. Wireless operators sending messages, but for the wireless, the Titanic's passengers would surely have been lost, as they could not have survived in small boats with ice all around them. Miss John Jacob Astor, bride of Colonel Astor who went down with the Titanic. Major Archibald Boot, a famous military aide of the two residents, Roosevelt and Taft, he battled for the rescue of women and children until the last lifeboat had left the ship and then went down with the Titanic like a true hero. One of the deluxe rooms aboard the Titanic, such as were occupied by John Jacob Astor and his wife Bride and many other multi-millionaires who went down with the mighty vessel. View of the promenade deck, the ill-fated White Star Liner RMS Titanic. This deck extends nearly the whole length of the ship and is used as a promenade for passengers. Part of the magnificent concert room of the steamship Titanic where women, passengers, spent much of their time reading and listening to the music. Luxuriously furnished smoking room of the RMS Titanic, where the men spent many social hours before going to their watery graves. Captain Smith of the Titanic, who saved many women and children, and then like a true hero went down with his ship. This picture also shows two of his officers. Interior of Cunard Liners Pier 
all cleared out, ready to receive the survivors of the Titanic. On arrival in the Carpathia, where they were all met by relatives, physicians, nurses, and others. The most remarkable photograph taken by a passenger on the Carpathia, showing Mr. and Mrs. Harder, a young honeymoon couple. When the cry came to get in the lifeboats, they, as a lark, thinking there was no danger, jumped in the first lifeboat that was lowered. J. Bruce Ismay, White Star Line Manager. Mr. Ismay was on the Titanic and he had been severely criticized for his actions in connection with the Great Calamity. This illustration is a Columbia and Britannia mourn for the Titanic's loss and her dead. The chart shows a North Atlantic showing where the Great Liner Titanic went down.